Hey, what's up guys, Jamie Fenn here, and today you're gonna learn how to do this fake neon blacklight effect. Before we get started, if you want this clip right here of me flipping the card, it will be available in the description down below for download. Also, there will be a neon sign included, so make sure to download that if you want to follow along step for step. Also keep in mind, make sure that you guys follow all the way until the end because there are some critical things you do not wanna miss that if you do, the effect won't look exactly the way it did in the intro. So what we wanna do first is come to the point right when I flip the card up and right click on the clip and select Retime Controls. Then select the down arrow next to the 100% at a speed point. Come to the point right when I catch the card and do the same thing, add a speed point, and then drag this upper icon here to adjust the speed and then go to 20%. Right click on the clip, turn off the retime controls, right click on the clip again and select retime curve. Over here next to retime frame, select the down arrow and select retime speed. Then click on these little dots and round them out like so with clicking this little icon here in the middle and turn these adjustments down so make the speed ramps a little quicker. So now you have a clip that looks like that. All right, go ahead and right click on the clip and turn off the retime curve. Then what you wanna do is come to the point right when I flip the card and push B on your keyboard for the blade tool and cut that clip and cut the clip again right when I catch the card. Now we have isolated the clip in the middle, so go ahead and right click on it, select new fusion clip here at the top, then click on fusion. Okay, with our media in one selected, let's go ahead and hold down shift and press spacebar and type in merge. Come up to your media pool and select your neon sign. Make sure you've imported it or else it won't be there and then drag that into your node graph down below and turn off your media pool. Select the output and connect that to the merge. Then hold down shift and press spacebar and let's add a DVE node and then hold down shift and press spacebar and type in a transform node. So go ahead and stack those like that. With the transform node selected, come over here and let's resize this down and go ahead and place it up here and what you wanna do is match up the corner of the foam here in the background with the frame of this. So in order to do so, so with the DVE node selected, what we wanna do is come up here to the pivot X and move this X over. It's really small, but when I hover my mouse over it, you can see it. Go ahead and move that over to the edge of the clip and make sure the crosshairs are on the edge of the frame like so. So put the pivot X at one. Then what you wanna do is adjust the X rotation and the Y rotation and match this up with the corner of the background. So I'm just going to do some adjustments like so. And if you need to, you can adjust the Y, just a few numbers, and then that way you can kind of get something that looks pretty flush with the backgrounds like that. Then select the transform tool and resize this down, maybe to something about that size. All right. And real quick, let's go ahead and just right click in the node graph here and arrange our tools to the grid. That way everything is lined up and looks pretty when we add nodes. Next, select the merge one node, hold down shift and press spacebar and type in merge to add another merge node. Then select anywhere in here and let's go ahead and add a background node. So hold down shift and press spacebar to add, to get to the shortcuts and select background. Connect that background to the merge node. With that background node selected, come over here to where it says color, click in the color. Let's go ahead and turn up the luminance so we can see the color. And I'm going to select this teal. So then click OK. Then with this merge node selected, select the polygon tool. Then you want to come to the point of when I flip the card, so the very first frame, and what we want to do is basically mask out this card like so. So I'm just selecting points around the edges like that. And you will see this teal square, which is exactly what you need. And go ahead and select anywhere in the node graph here. Use the arrow keys on your keyboard and just continuously mask out the card. Now what happens here is that this card actually goes behind this layer here. So we can just disconnect this merge node from this media right here so we don't have it overlapping when we do our masking so what you want to do is just continue your masking and go back and forth just clicking in here and then moving the points up and following the card all the way until i catch the card so this may take some time so i'm going to fast forward this section 
So once you've masked out the card all the way to the end of the frame, what you want to do is select the merge node, come over here to the apply mode and come down to color dodge. Then select the polygon tool and what we want to do is just adjust the soft edge a little bit here. So it has like a little bit of a glow like that. And you can adjust the border width so you can kind of get like a cool glow effect going around the card. For an added glow effect, you can select the polygon tool and hold down shift and press spacebar and type in glow. Go ahead and add that glow. But instead of having it glow over the entire frame, what you want to do is connect the polygon to the input of the glow. So connect it to the yellow arrow. And now you can see it has a little bit more of an added glow to it. And you can come over here to the glow size and adjust pretty much these parameters here. And you can kind of mess with it however you'd like. So now let's go ahead and connect our neon sign here again in the background to our merge node now that we've done our masking. And now we have something that looks like this. And then also what we want to do is make sure that the apply mode for our neon sign is not normal. We want to select screen. So now the card looks like it normally would when it goes in front of the sign. All right, so now let's go ahead and come to the beginning of our node tree and select the media in one. Hold down shift and press spacebar and type in merge. And then let's go ahead and click anywhere in the node graph here. Let's go ahead and add a background and connect that background to the merge node. Now with the background node selected, come up here to where it shows the color, turn this, turn the luminance all the way down and let's go ahead and pick something black light color, kind of like that purplish blue, like right here maybe. Click okay, then select that merge node and under the apply mode, let's come to soft light. Then what you can do is adjust this blend here to kind of adjust how strong you want that black light effect to be. I'm gonna put mine at about 0.5. All right, with the media in one selected once again, you want to hold down shift and press spacebar and type in ripple. Go ahead and add that in. And so with that ripple node selected, come over here to the right hand side and turn down the shine strength all the way. And we wanna to come to the very beginning of our clip and we want to kind of add like a shock wave effect when I flip the card up. So then what you want to do is turn down the frequency and then select the keyframe option and then move a few frames forward. I'm going to the point right when the card hits the apex of its height right here. And I'm going to turn the frequency up to about 50.3. And then as it comes down, I'm going to keyframe the frequency down. So now we have an effect that shows kind of like a shock wave. Then what you want to do is come to the end of our node tree and select that last merge node, hold down shift and press spacebar and type in distort. Again, I may have a plugin from Fusion Reactor. So if I use something that you guys don't have, go ahead and download it or use something similar and just kind of adjust the parameters to be the exact same. So I'm going to select lens distort and add that in between here like so. Then what I want to do is select the down arrow here and come to the beginning of our clip and I'm going to select the keyframe for the distortion and I'm going to come a few frames forward to about eight frames. Then I'm going to turn the distortion up. Not all the way, but almost all the way. And then I'm going to come to the very end and click on this little dot right here to bring it back to the normal default setting. Then to get a good smooth looking distorted frame, you want to select the spline at the top, come down and select lens distortion and that will bring up the keyframe points that we've created. And I'm just going to select the points and push F on my keyboard to round them out. And then what I wanna do is take this last keyframe here like this and adjust this up to, to have it curve and look something like that. Then what you wanna do is turn off the lens distort by clicking this a few times and then selecting ripples. And what we want to do is move this up like so. That way we get a quick ripple effect when I flick the card. All right, let's go ahead and select the edit tab. Come up to the effects library in the top left hand corner and select effects. And let's go ahead and drag an adjustment clip on top of our composition. Then select open effects and scroll down until you see camera shake. Go ahead and drag that on top of our adjustment clip. Turn off the effects library and let's go ahead and select the adjustment clip and come up to the right hand side and select inspector. Then select effects 
And the first thing we want to do is turn down the zoom to crop and also select the border type to either replicate or reflect. Then what we want to do is come right to the point of when our fusion composition starts and then come up here to the motion scale and speed scale and select both of their keyframes. Let's go ahead and turn the motion scale down like that to about 0.233 and then also turn the speed scale to about 264. These are just rough numbers for now. So then what we want to do is scroll a few frames forward to about right here and then turn the speed scale down and the motion scale down all the way. What I prefer to do is select the curves adjustment, come down here, select the down arrow and then select motion scale and speed scale. And then that way you can make adjustments. So for example, I actually want to come right before the clip starts, set a keyframe, turn those both down so there's no camera shake. So right on the drop, it kind of shakes the camera. And then what you can do is adjust these individually. So I'm gonna turn up the speed scale, see how that looks, okay? And then I'm going to turn up the motion scale just the slightest amount because it's going to do a lot. And boom, that's how you do this sweet fake neon black light effect. Have fun with this, you guys, and thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I will see you in my next video.